Hey, welcome to the second lesson of our tutorial series on how to create the game Among Us in Unity. For this lesson, I'm going to show you how to set up the new input system for Unity and how to code the basic player movement. Now, if you haven't seen the first video of this series, make sure that you go and watch that one first or find the playlist that has all of these lessons in one place. We have links in the description below. Also, make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you can be notified whenever we publish new videos. Now on with the lesson. All right, so here I have my Among Us project open inside of Unity and the first thing that we're going to do is just add a simple cube to our scene. So we can right click in our hierarchy, go down to 3D object and select cube. This will give us a little more spatial reference to work with so we don't just have a character walking around on a blue background. Now to read in the player's input we're going to use the new input system for this tutorial series. So to install it into your Unity project you're going to want to go to your package manager window which I have right here or you can go to window then package manager. You'll then need to change it from viewing packages in your project to in the unity registry from here we can then scroll down to input system select it after which you should see an option to install or update once you have the new input system installed in your project we'll then go on to create the players basic movement for this we'll need to create a new C sharp script so here I have a scripts folder and my C sharp script is called au underscore player controller with no spaces once you have this script created we'll go ahead and open open it up within our coding environment. The first thing that we need to do inside the script is include the new input system namespace. So I have using unity engine.input system. We then need to create some variables. The first variable will be to hold our rigid body. So I have a variable of type rigid body called my RB. The next variable is of type transform called my avatar. Now the next variable is a new type of variable, which is for reading in the player's input with the new input system. And the way that we're going to read in the player's input is a little bit different than we've covered in our previous tutorials for the new input system. Instead of creating a separate input action file, we're going to initialize a new input action right within the script. So I have a serialized field of type input action and I've called it WASD. The next variable is of type vector2 and it's called movement input. And our final variable is a serialized field of type float called movement speed. Once we have these variables created, the next thing that we need to do is create the on enable function. And inside this function, we need to enable our input action. And so I have wasd.enable. And you want to make sure that you call the enable function. We'll then create the on disable function. And inside this function, we need to disable our input action. And so I have wasd.disable. We then need to initialize our rigid body and our avatar variable. So within the start function, I have my RB equals git component, and we're looking for a rigid body. And then I have my avatar equals transform dot git child, and we're passing in a zero. Once we've done this, we'll jump down to the update function. And inside the update function, the first thing that we want to do is read in the player's input. So I have movement input equals WASD dot read value and we're looking for a vector 2. Once we've read in the player's input we want to change the direction the player's avatar is facing based on their input. So I have an if statement where we're checking to see if movement input dot x does not equal 0. And so if we're moving left our movement input dot x will equal negative 1 and if we're moving right it'll equal positive 1. But if we're not moving at all, it'll then equal zero, in which case we don't want to modify the current direction our player is facing. And so inside this if statement, I'm calling my avatar dot local scale equals new vector two, and I'm passing in math f dot sign and then movement input dot x. This will return either a positive one or a negative one based on the x component of our movement input variable. And the reason why I'm doing this is that we don't want to have any decimal values that will make Make our player super skinny. And then for the Y parameter, I'm just passing in a one. Next up, we want to handle the actual movement of our player and we'll do this within the fixed update function. Inside this function, all we have to do is call myrb.velocity and set it equal to movement input multiplied by movement speed. Once you have all of this, we can then save our script and go back to Unity. Inside Unity, you'll want to select your player prefab from your project window. Then you can go down to the add component drop down menu and just search AU player controller. 
and add the script. Inside the script, you'll notice something new that you probably haven't seen before, but what looks like something you would see within an input action file. And all we have to do for this input action is add a key binding. So to do this, you'll click the plus sign, then select add 2D vector composite. I've then renamed mine to movement, after which you want to double click on each component and set the key binding path to W for up, S for down, A for left, and D for right. Then all we have to do is set the movement speed variable which I've set to five. Once you've done this, we can then test out our project. So here I have the little 2D astronaut character and I can use WASD to move the character around the scene. And you'll notice that our character changes direction based on whether I'm moving left or right. Our character can also interact with this cube object. All right, so that's everything that we're gonna cover in this lesson on how to code the basic player movement. For the next video, we'll be going over how to create and program the player's idle and walk animations. Now make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and leave any questions you have in the comments below. Also subscribe to our channel so you can be notified whenever we publish new videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.